mention Cowboys and the Wild West, and instantly you're thinking of the Colt Single Action Army, and while it is an icon of America's frontier, the Colt was a military sidearm first, designed for the U.S. government trials in 1872, and adopted a year later as the Army's standard issue revolver. The Single Action Army was in Army service for nearly two decades and on the American frontier long before it went to Hollywood. The Single Action Army is one of history's guns, history remembered and sponsored by the Civilian Marksmanship Program. It is one of the most recognizable guns in American history. In fact, in the history of firearms. The Colt Model 1873 Revolver, the famous single action army. It was adopted by the US military in 1873. It's one of the most iconic firearms in history. But that being said, it was a heck of a revolver. I mean, it was one of the finest military and civilian arms of its period. A revolver for soldiers and civilians. The Colt was a gun for every man, from cowboys to the cavalry to the man on the street. The gun, as well as calling, being called a single action army, you know, the Colt marketed as the you know frontier six shooter and things like this as well. So it, I mean, it had obviously wide, wide, wide civilian sales in calibers, everything from 22 all the way up to like 476 caliber. Uh, it was popular in all strata of society. One popular caliber in civilian versions was the powerful 45 Colt, a rimmed black powder round with plenty of knockdown, 230 grains of lead. It's the same cartridge chambered in the military model, 1873. It fired 45 Colt, which basically until the uh, development of the 357 Magnum was the most powerful handgun cartridge in the world. It's a heck of a good round, it still is. I mean, I, I know people that, that use single actions for house guns. The civilian single action also came in a variety of barrel lengths, from three all the way up to 16 inches. If a customer wanted a custom revolver, then Colt was willing to make it. Civilians could order them from the factory, uh, either blued with plain hard rubber grips, they could get them nickel plated, they could get them gold plated, they could get them engraved, they could get them with pearl grips, they could get them with ivory grips. Well, that's back in the days when, when companies really cared about what the customers wanted and they would cater to it. As long as you paid for it, that's what you'd get. Unless you were in the Army, of course. The original military version of the Colt came pretty much one way, blued and case hardened with a walnut grip and a seven and a half inch barrel. But later, the government modified 17,000 of its existing Colts reissuing many to artillery units. And Gary is shooting one of these. And it's a, uh, it's called a Colt artillery model. Uh, this was uh, made uh, out of bits and pieces of other Colts. They were sent back to the armories and um, put together. Uh, the, the barrels were cut down from seven and a half inches to five and a half inches. And uh, then they were reissued. And one regiment that received these modified sidearms was Theodore Roosevelt's Rough Riders, the legendary fighting men handpicked by the future president in 1898. Their mission to liberate the nation of Cuba in the Spanish-American War. The Rough Riders had them. Now there are pictures of them wearing them in, in camp in, in Cuba. Uh, some people question whether they ever took any of them with them to Cuba, that instead using the, the Colt uh, 38 double action, which was frankly a far inferior gun. So in one of the most famous victories in American military history, the record is less than clear. We may never know if the Rough Riders carried the Colt single action at the capture of San Juan Hill. It's a shame because you gotta figure half of TR's Rough Riders, if not more, were, were cowboys and Western lawmen and, and, what, and whatnot. And so this is a gun they would have been totally familiar with. Still, the Colt single action's place in history is nothing if not secure. So great, it may have delayed the advance of American firearm technology. 
it, it took a while before uh, American inventors came up with a, with, a, with a decent double action revolver. But, you know, we had a heck of a good single action. It's a heck of a gun. There's no getting around it. A heck of a gun with a strong value to collectors. Gary's artillery model, with its provenance, is currently worth about $5,000. And you can still buy a new one. Colt still produces the third generation single action peacemaker. They are expensive, but highly desired by cowboy action shooters reliving the Old West.